you took over as CEO of Gilead in March. Yes. The question everybody keeps asking, the word around Gilead is strategy. What is the strategy? What is your elevator pitch here at the conference? Well, listen, uh, you know, uh, the reasons I joined Gilead have only been amplified over the past 10 months. I mean, it's really important to think as we cross this decade, this is the company that had two of the epic medical advances in the past 10 years in curing hepatitis C and in taking HIV from a death sentence to a chronic preventable illness. We want to take that same level of high bar relative to science and now apply it to new diseases. So we're talking here about the strength and the support in our HIV business and the continued innovation will go on there. But we're taking the, our science now to areas like inflammation and rheumatoid arthritis with a product we'll launch this year cancer with our cell therapy programs and we'll be looking for business development opportunities to grow and strengthen in, in our areas of core strength. Well speaking about business development, M&A is the other thing that always comes up with Gilead. Credit Swiss in a downgrade note on December 13th said the company needs to quote urgently engage in M&A. We've got 25 billion dollars in cash. What are you looking to buy? Well look, we're coming at this from a position of strength. We have a very strong core business in HIV. We've got uh, a, a strong pipeline with more than 15 medicines now in late stage trials in inflammation and in cancer. And we want to complement that, of course, with business development activities. I'm really pleased that uh, one, of the, one of the first uh, uh, business development transactions I announced since I've come into Gilead was a collaboration, a very large partnership with a company called Galapagos, which is the largest independent biotech company in Europe. This essentially doubled our research base overnight. And so I think we'll continue to look in areas of our core strength for partnerships, for M&A, small and medium-sized acquisitions that help supplement our already rich portfolio. Well, sticking with the topic of HIV, um, the U.S. government, the Trump administration's health department, has sued Gilead, claiming that you owe it royalties uh, on your HIV prevention therapies, Truvada and Descovy. And that's even after Gilead agreed to supply 200,000 people uh, with free medicine for more than a decade. What do you think precipitated that lawsuit from the health department? Uh, look, let me, let me say, first of all, I couldn't be more proud of the colleagues at Gilead that for the past decade have invented uh, medicines that have uh, both, both to treat HIV and also prevent HIV. This particular medicine is called Truvada, and it's for the prevention of contracting the disease. Gilead invented that medicine. Uh, we disputed the patents this, this summer. Um, and you know, one would think that uh, we're at odds with the U.S. government. We're not. We're, we're at odds around this patent. In fact, we're working very closely with uh, HIV community organizations and the government to end the HIV epidemic. And part of that is the donation program that, that you spoke about. 2.4 million uh, bottles of Truvada and then soon to be Descovy to make sure that we can really stop this epidemic here in the United States and around the world. Is the prevention therapy known as PrEP um, available and accessible to everybody who could benefit from it in the United States? The prices keep going up here, another 5% increase uh, at the beginning of this year. Um, can enough people actually get it? So uh, it's very clear by a study run by the CDC themselves that price is not the barrier to getting Truvada. In fact, less than 1% of people uh, can't afford, they can't afford their medicines or not taking the medicines. So we will continue to support people that are struggling to, so, to afford their medicine. What's really important here when we look at PrEP uh, is the ability to support uh, individuals that don't have access to the healthcare system. Uh, last year alone, we donated more than $400 million to community organizations that are helping people at risk of contracting uh, HIV get into community centers. These types of programs are what we need to make sure that we can end the epidemic. Uh, I have to ask you also about the 2020 election. We're in an election year. Drug prices are huge. It doesn't make sense. Or the president, who it is, will they majorly impact your business? And do you have a preference on who wins? <laughs> Look, what I have a preference on is that we continue to work on affordability of medicines for people in this country. It's a real issue, and I take it very seriously. Gilead takes it seriously. The research-based industry is taking it very seriously. Uh, I myself and colleagues at Gilead have been working with policymakers in Washington to look at ways that we can contribute more, Gilead and other research-based industries, to help patients 
uh, have less burden in out-of-pocket costs. But importantly and interestingly, a recent study came out to suggest that around 50% of the cost of medicines uh, actually goes to payers and hospital systems and other people in the supply chain. And that number up from around 30% only five years ago. So in addition to what we do as an industry, it's if, you, if we really want to solve this problem, and we do, we need to get all the stakeholders around the table and work with policymakers under whatever administration will exist in the future to make a difference for patients and their costs.